British Transformers 96 here with another review. This time we have The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, King, uh, Goblin King, and Thor and Ogun Shield. So here you go. So overall, just to go over the package, it's really nice. A big window uh, package, as you can see. It says The Hobbit. It's got their names. On the side, there are little bubbles so that you can see in. On the back, a nice picture of the set, as well as a bio for, um, for Thorin and a uh, bio for the Goblin King. And then the back you got another little window. Lots of little circle pictures of uh, Thor and Oakenshield. I don't know why. No picture of the Goblin King uh, in the movie. Just pictures of uh, Thorin, which is a little odd, but still fine. So yeah, so uh, of course everybody that buys this is going to buy it for the um, the uh, the Goblin King. But let's go over the uh, Thor and Oakenshield figure. All right, so on to Thor and Oakenshield. So he is the uh, the kind of leader of the dwarfs, and um, so yeah. So uh, I'm I'm pretty glad they decided to put this guy in with the pack uh, with the Goblin King. Um, they definitely should have and did uh, put a dwarf with him so that they make the Goblin King look a little bigger, and uh, so that's. That's smart, but overall very cool. So here he is. As far as the face sculpt, the face sculpt is pretty decent. You can definitely tell that it's Thorin. Um, and for a thin thick quarter figure, it's very nice. As far as detail on his clothing and everything, he's got a lot of nice detail, as you can see, looking really cool. The armor on his arm is really nice. The individual diamonds that are, that are done are really cool. And then just the detail throughout it is very cool. He does, um, uh, well, before we go into the accessories, let's just finish with the sculpt. As you can see here on the boots, they look very nice. Lots of nice detail with this figure, which is just really nice. And uh, I do like his hair. You've got the little gold uh, things in his hair to uh, do like two ponytails type of thing, type of look. Um, so yeah, so now let's go into his accessories. That's where he really is, just shines with his accessories. He comes with this um, this oak shield, hence the name Oaken Shield. Um, this, uh, so that's really cool. This is uh, what he used in the flashback uh, to fight the ogre, um, as well as he did have it at the end fight uh, with the ogre. Lost both times. Well, lo won the first time, lost the second. So overall, that's pretty cool. I like that. The, um, there isn't any like it doesn't. I don't know. There might be a peg on here. I can't see. I'm gonna leave it in the elastic though, just in case, so that the rubber band holds it together. But I don't know. There's there's certainly not a clip. Um, but I don't know if there's a peg on the shield to go into the arm. There might be, but I don't know. He also comes with this uh sword. This was the sword that uh. That he used, I think. I'm not sure. It's one that they found in the um, uh, I don't know what the, the troll, the troll cave. Uh, so this is one of the elf uh, knives that they found, and it can slide into the case right here, which is really nice. I do like that. He also comes with this, which is detachable. Just get him to stand up. There you go. And this is just really nice. It does come with a sheath, and when you take it out, this is the goblin cleaver, if I'm not mistaken, that they find in the uh, troll cave. But this is uh, the one that, when this guy takes out of the sheath, you know, he drops it, and all the uh, the goblins start freaking out because this kill this like slit a thousand uh, goblins' throats or something like that. Really cool. I like that a lot. I like that they gave it a sh nice sheath, and the sheath does have a peg, which can just peg right onto his back. Um, the only minus with this is, as you can see here, it is it is open for most of it, so it can it does just kind of slide out sometimes like this. Uh, luckily, um, it's solid at the end there. I would have liked like a little bit just solid thing like right here just so that it would never fall out. It does fall out sometimes but it's not a big deal. As far as articulation on this guy it's very good. He's got a ball jointed head but because of um just the way that his hair is done and the way his head sculpted, it's barely movable, unfortunately. He's got ball hinge shoulders, hinge swivel elbows, swivel wrist, swivel waist, uh, but it is a little hindered being on his clothes, so you have to take his legs to move the swivel waist. He's got a ball hinge hip, hinge swivel knees, and uh, no ankle. N not a problem. Um, you know, I'm fine if they take away the ankle. It's if they do, if they pull the Avengers where they take away the ankles, the wrist, and the waist that I really don't. Don't like overall decent articulation and a really nice sculpt so let's go on to the goblin king
So here's the Goblin King. This is the person that you're buying this pack for, because if you're not and you just want Thor and Oakenshield, he comes in a single pack. This one, this is the only pack that you can get it in. So when I first saw the movie, uh, the Goblin King, I found him a little bit annoying. I really didn't like him. And when I got out of the theater and I started thinking about it, I started to like him more and more. Oops, he fell over. I started to like him more and more. And then uh, by the second and third time that I saw it, I love this, uh, this Goblin King. I think he's just really cool and... Uh, he does add some humor to the movie as well. So overall, as far as the toy, it's done really well. The face sculpt right here is just really cool. He's all fat. He's got a bunch of uh, little bumps and rivets in the, his uh, his chin there, which is uh, really neat. I love the ears, very goblinish, and then the hair that comes down, really cool. Paints a little interesting on this. There's some parts that I like about the paint, and some things I don't like about the paint. Uh, the paint around his nose and eyes is pretty cool. It's a bit red, like it's like really red, um, a bit more red than I would have liked, but that's alright. The hair is a little strange because on the back here, you get his hair and then his like skin is like super dark. I don't understand that. Um, and then, you know, it goes into the uh, much more pale. I don't know why. Uh, I guess it's just supposed to be detailing, but they did it a little bit too much, I think. Um, the red on the ears, they're done really well, just some highlights, which I do like a lot. And then you get just his really just gross body. Really cool. Uh, lots of nice detail there. And then you got the red on the stomach. The stomach, I think that the red shouldn't be this much. This is a little bit too much. Just a little bit. Cut that down just a tad bit. And then the arms and everything. The red arms have a little uh, reddish uh, haze to it. Really like that. They did really well. Some parts of the red I like. Some parts I don't. It's just it's a little interesting. Then he's got... I don't know, a skirt, I guess, loincloth that goes all the way around. But it's pretty cool. It's done really well. It is more soft rubber plastic, but if you did bend it a lot, it, I couldn't see it breaking. Um, it seems to be glued to the front here and to the back, and the sides aren't glued. They can, uh, they can be moved, um, so that's kind of interesting. His legs here are really nice, uh, least sculpted, as you can see. The red detailing is pretty good, and I like how on the joints there's some red detailing of his, like, fat uh, rubbing together. And then he's got these toes that have red highlighting all over it, and then green toenails, very gross. He doesn't have green fingernails, though, so... That's a little interesting, but whatever. Overall, that's pretty cool. As far as, uh, accessories that he comes with, he does come with this crown. Which looks pretty nice. I like the sculpting on it. It looks pretty cool. And then he does come with this staff, this kind of a animal head skull, which is nice. He does have this in the movie, of course. Really do like this, uh, these soft rubber plastic kind of strands right there. And then there's a couple, like, heads, as you can see. Really neat. He holds it extremely well. He can only hold it in his left hand. I would have liked him to be able to hold it, like, kind of out like this and have it touch the ground. But because his, uh, his elbow joint doesn't move enough, you really can't do that, unfortunately. So as articulation, now they're on to that. No head articulation, which is understandable. I was expecting like a swivel, but uh, but you know, no head articulation, that's fine. They they put a, they could have incorporated a swivel, but I don't really it doesn't really matter that they didn't. He's got ball hinge shoulders, which work really well, they can do a lot. He's got hinge swivel elbows, but the um the elbow articulation isn't much. It's just really it goes down kind of like this, but he doesn't bend very much. Uh, but still it still works. Ball joint upper torso, which is really nice. Swivel hips would have liked ball hinge, but they are just swivel, and then that's 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 fine. Hinge, um, swivel knees. The swivel is very hindered though, but the hinge works very nicely, and uh, no ankle of course. Limited on articulation, but it's very understandable for a figure this size and uh, for this uh, this kind of mass. He doesn't do any extravagant poses, so it's not like you're missing out much on it. But overall, he's really cool. As far as in scale, do I think he's in scale? I'm gonna say no. Um, I am. Uh, here's just Oak and Shield to compare him with, as well as one of his, uh, his subjects. Um, a goblin and as you can see it just he's big he's just very big which is nice and I think that he's just not quite in scale because this guy it's not like he's a normal sized person he's a dwarf so so I mean he's just not that tall and as you saw there was a bunch of goblins that kind of laid on the floor and then he stepped on them to get off of his thing and if this guy laid on the floor he would it, this doesn't look like it was in scale from the movie the goblins on the floor were much smaller uh, but so so that's what I'm going based on and every, the way people were looking up to him he seemed to be a lot bigger in the movie not a huge 
difference though. It seemed to be in decent scale. I'm not saying it's horrible scale. It's in good scale, but it's not in perfect scale, unfortunately. I think it looks awesome with the Goblin as well. So that's really cool. So overall, really cool pack. I would have loved if they replaced Thorn Oaken Shield with um, the little glo Goblin in the chair that, you know, had the like uh, pen and paper and he was writing down what he was telling them to and then, you know, he kind of He's on the little chair that kind of swings him to places. I would have loved to have that goblin. That was a hilarious goblin. But overall, I really do like this pack. The um, Thorn Oaken Shield is a really nice figure to, all together, just really good. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, he is exactly the figure that comes in the single packs. There is nothing different about this one, even its accessories, if I'm not mistaken. So that's awesome. So you, it's not like they left him left his accessories out or anything to be in this pack. This is you get a ten dollar three quarter inch single pack figure plus you get a deluxe $20 one overall pricing is great because it's $30 and that should come out to be $30 and uh, overall I really like it definitely for big fans of the Goblin King um, don't get this guy if you're not too into the Goblin King because Thorn Oak and Shield you can buy him in single packs so this is definitely for the Goblin fans and especially the Goblin King fans overall a really nice pack and I highly recommend it I'm really happy with it and it looks awesome on your shelf